My tiny house has been on Airbnb for over a month now, so I thought I'd make a little update video telling you all how that's going. Spoiler alert, it's not going terribly well. But nonetheless, people always seem to be curious about the results of these money laundering schemes, so I thought it would make for an interesting video. I did have some people stay here last week, so I set up the camera to show the adrenaline pumping process of me and my mum cleaning it up for the next people just because this footage is more interesting than me sitting in front of the camera and spouting off numbers at you for the next few minutes. Usually my mum just does the changeovers herself so there might be a few moments in the video where you'll see concern on her face as a result of me interrupting her process and making the pillows all squint. As a quick catch up just for people who are new to the channel or are maybe just stumbling across this video, I bought this tiny house which was previously just an abandoned building back in 2019 and over the next year I renovated it, well paid other people to renovate it before I moved in. I lived here for a couple of years then bought another place with my brother which once again has been getting renovated. I decided to Airbnb the tiny house because optimistically I thought that the income it would bring in could help with the renovation costs of the new place and I also thought it could be a bit of a family business with me acting as Don Corleone, my mum running it and my brother getting a cut of the profit giving him a passive income source. So maybe quite selfish reasons in people's eyes who don't like the idea of Airbnb or landlordery, which I can totally understand, but those are my reasons nonetheless. I'll circle back to the selfish and immoral aspects of Airbnb later on in this video, but first let's jump into the juicy part, how much my tiny house made on Airbnb in its first month. Since going up on Airbnb at the start of December, we've had three lots of people stay here, two lots who stayed for three nights and one lot who stayed for two nights. In total, this has brought in £686.83p, which in dollars is about $876. We've also got four pending bookings throughout the year, which will bring in £1,299.42p, or about $1,658. That is assuming everything goes swimmingly and my tiny house isn't blown up by an act of God before these people come to stay. Some of these future bookings are for longer five and seven night stays, which is why we're getting more income for those bookings. Now I did say that things are not going terribly well, and by that I just mean that it's not very profitable. As in, it's not profitable. Let me explain. So in the first month, as I said, it made £686.83p, which is all very nice, but once you add up all the costs of that month, it's less very nice. I have a mortgage on this place, which is £504.95p per month. We have a thing in Scotland called council tax, which you pay to your local council every month, which goes towards the cost of things like maintaining streetlights, water supply, and not fixing potholes, and that is £137.85p a month. The electricity bill for that month was 12986 Broadband is 35 99 TV license is 13 25 and Netflix is 10 99 I also pay my mum an undisclosed fee for managing the bookings and changeovers. She wasn't keen on me sharing her bank balance and mother's maiden name in this video, hence the undisclosedness of that number. So not including what I'm paying my mum, for the first month of this pyramid scheme I lost £146.6p which is about $186 for my viewers across the pond. Beyond these monthly costs I am also quite deep in the hole for the furnishing and admin costs involved with starting up the Airbnb. I had to pay my local council £650 to get permission to put it on Airbnb and there's a yearly cost of £130 to get all of the electronics tested to make sure they don't blow up on any guests. I also decided to completely refurnish the Airbnb before listing it and in total that ran about £4,000 or $5,100. That included things like a new TV, microwave, new cutlery, pots, pans and the like, but then also a lot of new towels, rugs, bedding and a new sofa 
because I didn't want anyone who was allergic to cat fur spending their hard-earned shekels to come here and end up getting done a mischief from any wayward fur that was left on the furniture or bedding from when me and my cat Junior were living here. I am aware that this all sounds a bit negative but I'm still quite optimistic that it will work out. The first few people that have stayed here have had really nice times and have left very positive reviews which I'm sure will help us get more bookings. Losing money aside, it's also been quite an interesting experience. It's a nice feeling getting bookings and positive reviews and learning what works and what doesn't. For example, I previously set the minimum number of nights that you had to stay as three but decided to switch it to two so that people could just come for the Friday Saturday weekend and that immediately resulted in us getting three new bookings. I've also experimented with the price trying to keep it lower than other places in the area for most of the year with discounts on longer stays to see how that affects things. So for now I'm going to keep it going and hope it turns around and brings in profit but if it doesn't I know there's always the option to cut my losses and sell the house. I'm well aware that I'm in a very privileged and lucky position to even be trying this so I don't take that lightly. Now I said I'd come back to the morality of this endeavour because it's just something I want to acknowledge. I know I've spoken about this topic before but I do like to mention it to avoid looking completely ignorant. I've read quite a lot about the ethicalness of doing Airbnb as a host and I've come to the conclusion that there are two sides to it, lending to a sort of spectrum of ethicalness. So this is just my opinion based on what I've read, but I think if you build something purpose built for Airbnb or if you're renting out something like a spare room or dungeon within your house, then I think it's totally fine. I'm talking about shepherd's huts, cabins, or a bedroom above your garage. I personally don't think people can claim you're a bad person for doing any of those things. On the other side, the situation which is seen as not very ethical is when you're buying up affordable starter homes or family homes, reducing stock of this kind of housing in your area and renting them out as holiday homes. I can understand why that's morally a bit devilish. I don't think it's too outrageous to say that I fall somewhere in the middle of this spectrum. Because this tiny house was an abandoned building before I bought and renovated it, I haven't reduced the stock of housing in this area by choosing the Airbnb it. It's also not cheap enough to be a starter home for someone who's looking for their first house in the area because it's been valued at offers over 170000 and someone looking for their first home could get something probably much better and much cheaper quite nearby. It's just because it's a unique property that has been valued that high. And it's also not a family home because, well, it's a one bedroom tiny house. I'm totally open to hearing anyone's thoughts which might counter that viewpoint though because I am a bit concerned about the ethicalness of doing this. I don't want to come across horribly and ignorant. So yeah, open to alternative views on that. I know it's not a terribly relatable or wholesome topic, but I do share a lot of what I've got going on with you all, and this is one of the things that I've got going on. So I felt there might be a bit of curiosity about it, and I hope it scratched that itch for you all. If you'd like to stay at the tiny house, I'll drop the link below, and if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you leaving a like and subscribing for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.